Well, greetings, hello, and welcome on back. Episode number eight coming at you, Imperial Jedi, and there is much to do, much to do. We have a very ambitious episode coming at you today. We are looking to actually to grow and maybe double the city size. Population might be a little bit of a lag, but I really am hoping to like lay down a huge amount of um, arterial roads. Um, arterial? There we go. Uh, try to fill those in, get some neighborhoods going. So, uh, yeah, Speedy Gonzalez. And, um, yeah, I guess kind of the reason is I wouldn't say we're really in a hurry when we're building cities, but we do want to unlock the incinerator and um, the crematorium. We've spent so much time now just doing, like, highway stuff and a lot of, like, micromanaging. So the city, if we don't um, manage it properly, will just be, like, half garbage dumps. So we got to be careful. Um, but, yeah, before we jump into that, though, let me show you guys. I've done some improvements. Uh, some great suggestions came in. So I've tried to implement quite a few of those. And I feel like we have so much more function out of this insane spaghetti junction. And I did miss one arm. So I definitely admit that one. But um, I did go back and I changed the roundabout. Yeah, you'll see it's it's so much better so let's uh let's jump in shall we it's not one of those episodes where i'm just too excited too much to do so uh yeah the right about itself uh what i did was made it available for like two-way traffic so now you can actually get um back onto the highway from the roundabout which is kind of cool too and the missing arm that's the missing arm right there so that's in place otherwise you've got two ways into the roundabout you kind of see how the lanes like play together right here and then the real main thing that's different is you can no longer turn left at this intersection right here. So if you're going to be doing some vanilla playthrough, uh, one-way roads can kind of help you with that. But the idea is now we go a little bit further in. If there's going to be a backup, it's not going to block the roundabout. So that's totally fine. And if you wanted to access these roads here, you can take the roundabouts further up and then turn right and go around. Or, you know, just go up this way and then turn left. So a few more options. These streets here, a bit of a jumbled mess. Um, I'm kind of seeing or seeing that we can't really expand this too much more. So I think on the horizon, we're going to have to start another industrial pocket and then possibly connect the two of those together with trains for some uh, for some fun. But it's, it's a high volume area. I'm definitely aware of that now. Um, thank God it's not my job, eh? But I feel like when I play Skylines, my approach is to like get her done, see what happens, see if it's good or bad, and then try to improve on it. And then hopefully arm yourself with that knowledge for when you're building more stuff in the future. But yeah, I like this a lot. And then we also um, did a pretty big change over here. So the arm that was uh, previously going onto the other side now comes to the inside. And so it's just a lot safer now for the merging. You've got some space to make your way over. And if you wanted to exit, you can take that one or go now further up into, uh, into here. Now, the only spot that I thought we could do this together, the only spot that's still a little bit backed up is the bridge. And I thought just for some a little bit of inspiration, hopefully, we could just do one little uh, looping arm like this. And then we'll uh, jump into our episode. And that'll be our uh, speedy Gonzalez expansion. Let's, ooh. Ooh, that actually is really nice. A little bit big, though. But that, that, that's good right there. Okay. Hey, a few of you have been showing um, some of your work off in the Discord. That's cool. I appreciate that, eh? Alright, you guys have probably seen it. I downloaded another mod. I'll link that in the description below. Just kind of helps organize your roads a bit better. You can pair it with a mod that also expands your toolbar. I think I should get that one too. But in case you see me like struggling to find streets, don't, don't judge me. I don't know where they all are yet. Um, Alright, so that will be elevated. Let's fix our turning lanes here. Yeah, yeah. And then since we don't have as much traffic going through here now, we could make this into two-way traffic. Okay. So yeah, on the docket for today, we're going to be building a little bit closer towards the rails, and we're going to try to be incorporating a different set of grids into our um, build style. And this is a question that, like, I get this very, very frequently. Like, how do you break away from the grid? Or, like, if you've got two grids, how do you blend them kind of thing? So we'll just do our absolute best right here. The uh, the train is not in a straight line. So we're going to follow a little bit that curve. And we're going to try to blend these all together with some strong cross junctions and maybe, like, one good roundabout. So let's get a six-lane road going down. I'll give us a chance here if we want to um, 
do some fancy turn lanes or anything. Actually, what are you feeling like today? And try synthetic dawn again. Almost. Railhawk, you're the winner. Let's go. Yeah, so I thought we'd just have enough space that we could still do a street or two. And we could get a um, train station and whatnot on, uh, on there. But more or less, I'm kind of looking for just a meandering, very gentle curve on a... Um, uh, what am I looking for? Arterial. That's a silly one today. I can't get that word right. Yeah, arterial road. And that'll be a bridge going up and over. Anarchy to allow that. Let's get our nodes. Raise those up. Same object height. Actually, let's grab these nodes too. Let's grab those nodes and then we'll slope them. Okay, that's not too bad. And then guys, I want to show you this too. I want your thoughts on this. I've got um, so much transit in mind for how the city is going to unfold. But what I was thinking is if we stretch across the road that has the bridge going over that uh, chasm canyon thing that we created, if we could get Metro going through that as well. So picture this, right? Uh, Metro running along this road. This road then becomes a very busy arterial road, very beneficial through the whole city. Density can increase in some pockets of this too, which is cool. So population moves up. And then how fun would this be, right? So this is going to be like if you're driving on the Don Valley Parkway, if you're in Toronto, and you're driving towards the Bloor Viaduct, and then you see the Metro, see the TTC going right underneath. That would be so cool. So because of the nature of the bridge, I can't put the Metro like through the pillar, but we could run it like underneath pretty close to it. And if it spans this chasm, that would look so cool. And so Metro, I think for the most part, will stay underground. Maybe on the outskirts of the city, we can have some above ground stuff, but that would just be so cool to see that. You let me know your thoughts. And so, yeah, that would be like straight road going down towards the, uh, the waterfront, the beach area, or like, you know, tourism, wealthy area. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, this will be downtown. We'll put in the tallest skyscrapers, the coolest of the sports stadiums, you know? We'll get some good stuff. And that'll be nice. And that means that we'd probably have a, uh, a pretty big train station with a transit hub, uh, wherever this kind of meets up. And then because we've built on this map before, I kind of have an idea of how I want the rails and stuff to be. But I think what we're going to do is a ring road rail system. So the rail will make its way downtown as well. And that'll help us kind of follow the waterfront. And then we do want that really, really big industrial port area over here. So lots of trains, lots of train turnarounds. That'll connect to the downtown. And that'll give us a chance to, you know, maybe put in one of those terminal train stations. So trains come in. They've got that nice long approach, like six or seven tracks or something. Lots of lines. Yeah, all of it coming together. I see it. Too excited to get there. Anyway, so let's just keep pushing. So... Whenever possible, we'll use the American six-lane road. And um, I think between episodes, what I'll probably end up doing is similar to last one. I'll uh, just you know get some fixes. I'll probably jazz up a roundabout or two. I'll make some of those custom turn lanes. And then, I don't know, if you guys are interested, I could do like a standalone episode at some point too. Using this city here to get some just casual tutorials out. So, I don't know. You let me know. Let me know your thoughts, eh? Oh, this is going to be so cool. So to help us get away from the grid, I'm going to do a nice meandering uh, curved road through here. And I'll kind of go over the whole thought process in a, in a second here. So what I'm envisioning is this would now continue going straight, and that'll be a strong arterial road kind of heading towards um, you know other side of the river. That'll be nice living spots. And then I think what we're going to do with the trains is it just seems a little bit awkward to have like the train be pretty tall on that side of the river. Well, that's a little bit wacky. Yeah, we got the, the train being pretty tall on this side of the river and then it drops height a bit too much, I think, on uh, on the other side. That's better. So what I'd like to do is maybe bring the bridge up a little bit more and then go over top of the highway. So the highway can then go back down to ground level, train goes up and above it. And then I think we'd probably maybe go above this road too. See, we've got the uh, the hill coming down. So we could be elevated. 
And then this is another thing I wouldn't mind having some input on. Um, conversation has already started. I've had some people uh, ask me the live stream stuff too. But yeah, bicycles. What do we need to do with bicycles? The walkability score, that kind of stuff for the city, right? Like, what is the plan? So maybe you guys have this where you live. Uh, in Toronto, here on Vancouver Island as well, we've got um, some really cool rail corridors that occupy where train tracks used to be. So in Toronto, it's the West Toronto Rail Path. It's elevated. It's really cool. It takes you like the whole way into the uh, the downtown. And um, on uh, Vancouver Island, it's the Galloping Goose, which is kind of fun. So if we are going to be going for a nice big walkability score, which is outstanding when it comes to uh, dealing with traffic, make the city less drivable, more walkable, that'd be kind of a fun approach. But yeah, so we could do um, elevated uh, bicycle paths right next to our rail lines. And then we can have like a couple set of streets that just maybe run the whole way across town. So it's an uninterrupted bike path the whole way through. And then you can have some like little slipaways, bicycle autobahn network. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, it's all stuff we're going to be trying to like work towards and incorporate into our city here. Because I've got a few cities on the go and I'm starting to kind of like hit those walls around like 150,000 or so people. So we want to make sure that we're doing a bit of a better job at managing traffic as the, uh, the city goes. I've just been so focused on cars lately that I think we're kind of neglecting some of the, the goody goods here. Okay, um, cross junctions. Back into business here, please. So these are just so heckin' fun to do. Let me get a... Um, I don't know, do we two lanes for this or one lane? I think one lane. But yeah, in a nutshell, a cross junction is just what you think it is. It's a junction that kind of makes a cross shape. And if you'll kind of visually look, of course, right? Like, you don't even need... You don't need no degree in any of this uh, traffic stuff here. You can see that if you're approaching this intersection, that is a really, really tight turn if you're a truck or anything, you know, long, right? So what we'd have instead is just going straight in the intersection here, and then you can turn right in this little um, uh, hotspot. And then that's easier for the long vehicles. You don't have to worry about getting stuck in a traffic light. My favorite song, as if this is scripted. Yeah, it's nice like that. And so, yeah, like these finishing touches, I'll probably come in with like custom roads and whatnot. And that's the kind of stuff. Just let me know if you wanted to see like an episode of that. Just let me know. I don't want to take away from your guys' experience, you know? But like, yeah, like a four plus three right here or something crazy. Roads that make kind of sense, right? All right. So there's a cross junction there. Uh, I think a cross junction here as well. Maybe this one uh, can be two lanes. This can be a little bit bigger. And we can also... Kind of see if there's a difference in traffic and if one's easier to manage than the other per se that is beautiful i like it and then a roundabout i think yeah for this one here and then we'll probably lose a lane make that 50. lose a lane going into it and then we'll do high speed turns so this can be a pretty big um uh, through fair here and then i th i think this will be where the highway connection is going to be and then i i was mentioning at the beginning of the episode that we wanted to do another uh industrial cargo park uh wow words it, it sometimes just gets so tough doesn't it eh an industrial cargo pocket so what i'd like to have is a cargo train come in do a loop have some manufacturing maybe a couple warehouses and then a highway connection and that'll be goods coming in by rail if we connect this area over to here with rail as well. We could get some cargo trains to spawn in between and that'll help kind of cut back on um, uh, road traffic. And that'll be a fun challenge. I love doing the rail stuff. And we can get some assets, do some uh, you know stationary park trains, little turnarounds, garages. Love it. All right. Oh, um, this reminds me. This reminds me. So over in... Uh, over here, right? I had a few comments come in and I genuinely could not put two and two together to understand what everyone was uh, talking about. But previously, this lane was not able to hit all sides of the single point urban interchange. And so what we've done is this lane now opens into two. We have a three lane set up for a hot second here. And the two lanes allow you to either go straight left or right. So you can pick a little bit more easily. So same thing on the flip side here. Just thought I'd mention that. So yeah, great suggestions, all of you. I really appreciate them. 
and then yeah, there's the roundabout. Perfect. Let's scale this down a lane. Use the skinny one here. Oh yeah, that's nice. And just pretty simply connect this all up. And again, just, you know, just keeping time and all that stuff on uh, on our side. I'll I'll make this look really cool in between episodes and show you. All right, but that's basically that. And a lot of this stuff, you can still do it on vanilla. You have to sometimes make these projects a little bit bigger to help kind of trick the AI. And you can hot swap between, you know, different types of roads, right? Because they'll have different speed limits on them. I think if you hover over the description, it'll tell you what the speed limit is. Six lane road. Yeah, speed 60. There you go. Yeah, so you can kind of play with that a little bit too. All right. So here is more of that kind of going back to the very first question. How do you blend your, your districts and your zones and that kind of stuff? Well carefully and gently. So what we got here is a nice strong straight line that's competing with the rest of the city. So what we're going to do is just kind of casually build the grid out and see if we can blend them together without them looking kind of dumb. And I feel like every single project will be a little bit different than the, the others, but it's going to be a combination of doing some like parallel roads. So maybe we follow the curve of this guy a couple times. So even just that's really nice and gentle. And then we can start doing some of um, these across. So I'll switch from the suburb to the line street. I think uh, in this section right here, we'll keep the neighborhoods a little bit more compact. We will at some point want to move into some high density though. And I'd like to use, if we could, maybe like a tree line street through here as well. And then this one can maybe be uh, going that way. Yeah, so there we go. This is how we can kind of mix these two together, right? And I feel like the curve between these two would be very gentle. Yeah. And then that would be a good spot there to do another straight line. Yep. It's a lot of trial and error. I don't really have a lot of rhyme or reason other than just kind of looking at it after and seeing if it looks okay. I think so far so good. And the transition to high density, that'll be kind of fun. We have high density unlocked and that'll definitely help us with our, uh, our quest here to go up in population. Because yeah, it's uh, 11,000 for trains and then oh gosh what is it for the incinerators oh we have these oh wait wait do we have these already down oh oh wait when do we unlock this wait a minute this got unlocked a long time ago it's got unlocked with this one didn't it uh oh for Pete's sake yeah it probably came with high density didn't it Oh, for Pete's sake. All right, well, put one of these down, please, and thank you. Here, here we are complaining about the fact that we're just a city of garbage dumps. All right, well, that's good news. I'm going to put down one to start. Uh, these are pretty expensive, so we'll not put down too many at once. Okay. And then, oh, man, the dream would be to start emptying these out and deleting them. Let's worry about that later. All right, so garbage incineration. That is really good news. I can't believe I overlooked that, eh? And then I think it's 18,000 for us to unlock the uh, cemeteries. Oh, man. You know, I don't really want that to be... Um, that's a bit better. I didn't want that to get too close in terms of the intersection. I think that kind of gives that a chance to meander. It's like your arterial roads, they don't have to go in a straight line. I feel like the main idea of an arterial road is that it takes you from like one part of the city to the other. And it does it like efficiently. You don't have to cross through a bunch of weird side streets. You're not making too much noise where you don't have to be. The road should be wider. It should be a bit more logical when it comes to some of your turns. You may have the cross junctions to help out uh, your traffic. Smart, you know, lane planning. And then your like side streets, your neighborhoods, those are chaotic. You gotta stop people from uh, driving through them. No shortcuts, please. And you can do, you know, some crazy stuff with one ways. City of Toronto does that a lot to help stop people from, uh, you know, using those as uh, three ways. Stop a left-hand turns from happening in some spots too. That's kind of cool. Yeah, the goal is though you keep the uh, the vehicles driving on the arterial roads and uh, side streets or people that live there. And then if you're doing a great job overall, your city has a strong walking score, which we're going to try to work on. And then everyone's either biking, walking, or they just live so close that you don't have very much to drive. And the only people out there on the roads are your deliveries, your service vehicles. Bada bing, bada boom, right? That's a pretty strong grid. Because of the arterial road, we're not trying to do too many connections to it. Just kind of like going with what I'm saying right here. 
but maybe one more into here. And we'll just, you know, pay attention to the lane mathematics, right? We wouldn't have like a six lane road go into like one, you know, one possible exit, right? You know what? Let's actually go. Let's go down. Okay. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, and it's very tempting, but you should not blanket zone the whole thing at once. What that'll do is create a death zone, or a death wave, sorry. You'll have everyone moving in at the same time be about the same age. They'll have kids at about the same time. Those kids will be about the same age, you know? And you just get stuck in this cycle where when it comes time for them to move on, they all do it at the exact same time. So that can catch up with you. That worked out very nice, didn't it, today. Eh? So we'll zone a few pockets, we'll take a hot break, we'll put down some uh, services, we'll bring in pipes, that kind of stuff, and then we'll zone a little bit more. And we're going to want to transition into some high density through here too, which is cool. So let's just do, let's say wall to wall for there, that's not bad to start. A little bit of high density in here. We'll probably scale a lot of this down, just because it's going to be a bit too wall to wall. But let's go for the population milestones first. So some commercial, which will help bring the power across as well. Perhaps some mixed use through here. And let's get some pipes. Oh, also 11,000 uh, city population is when we unlock some of the um, uh, hubs, which are going to be from the train station uh, content creator pack. Stations and hubs or whatever that one is. And so we'll use probably at least one or two of those buildings uh, in our big transit area over here. And that's probably going to be one of the open area metros as well as the um, inner city bus. That'll be kind of cool. The next episode, we're going to be doing some public transit in and around these new neighborhoods here. And I feel like I should just do at least one bike lane now just to kind of get us thinking about that. And hopefully I, don't, I won't forget about them when they see them. I feel like I'm famous for that, eh? Start with this crazy, awesome conversation about doing something and then neglect to do it in the episode. And then while editing, be like, oh yeah, that thing I said I would do. Okay, that's not too bad. So, uh, some random questions that uh, come up often. What happens when your demand drops off? Well, not the end of the world. We do need some more jobs, but if we wanted to keep the residential going, what we could do is just make this area just too good to refuse. So that means like outstanding schools, amazing parks, and that'll slowly trickle in new people. They will need jobs. So you can't just do this forever, but that'll kind of help keep the, uh, the ecosystem moving, especially when the city gets really, really big and it feels like your demand's kind of dying off. Just make like beautiful, beautiful neighborhoods, high in value, great services. People will come. They want jobs. They want to spend and the, the system just keeps going. Another common question too is, can you start using offices before you have a university? And the answer is kind of. Some people will come from the region and they're going to have already a um, little university degree. So we can do a conservative amount of zoning. This might already be a little bit too much. This will also take a huge bite out of our uh, industrial demand. Offices also work as industry. The reason why we're not really zoning too much more yellow industry is this area here gets a lot of volume already. So we would need another highway interchange to help alleviate some of the bottleneck or um, a little bit of cargo trains, right? So I think like we can maybe zone like one more neighborhood and that's kind of it. Otherwise you're, you're pushing it, mister. You are pushing it. Maybe even another lane through here might help, but my analogy from a few episodes ago, right? You can only just keep making the lanes so much wider until it gets kind of silly, right? So always thinking outside the box. That'll be us today. All right. So some offices, they also work really, really, really great at sandwiching in stuff that's loud. High density commercial is so darn loud, I use it so infrequently, but if you have tree-lined streets and offices around it, it helps kind of hold that noise in. So you see offices don't make noise, commercial do. Offices become that blanket for the noise. People are very finicky, you know, so. Just like in real life, no one wants to live next to, you know, anything that's too loud. Okay, so we're motoring. City population's moving up, even though it's slow. Our uh, utilities are in place. We're starting to hit a wall. So let me go ahead and toss down well, inland eco treatment. I feel like a lot of this stuff is temporary. We'll kind of transition this into um, more manufacturing, a little bit more warehouses, less pollution as time goes on. Reclaim this for offices. 
All right, that's cool. Yeah, so water is good. Power is... It's okay. It's holding on. It's holding on. The good news is if we burn trash, we get power that way too. So that's good. Uh, hospital. We could use one of those. I'm out of money. That is a classic song and dance. Since we're in here, 12% for high density. They can uh, tolerate that as well. We'll keep an eye out for some pop-ups though. And then loans. Take that. Uh, let's save up. Pay that one off. So we're on three speed now. And then we'll get an extra few credits out of that. And I feel like that's going to be all of our spending. We'll probably have to uh, to call it there, eh? Let her run for a few minutes in between to accumulate some cash again. Perfect. Here we go. Sneaky trick, eh? Sneaky trick. Of course the interest gets you, but, you know, we can afford it in the long run. Okay. So population's moving up. Um, budget is looking fantastic as a result. Let's get some... This is my favorite commercial, but just so I ain't yelling, yo. Uh, let's use this hospital different than the other one nice outstanding coverage death care let's do that as well what do you cost eight thousand that's doable is it morbid it's a, that's too close that's too morbid let's put that a few blocks away power of movement mod allows us to center this oopsies did not like how that worked let's keep it where it is that actually was nice with the uh, the terrain not being weird okay you would like some power of course a little bit of shopping behind the hospital. This can be a park. Excellent. Oh, I put the park in the wrong spot. I, I kind of like that though, so let's do it. Okay, yeah, so we are seeing a few icons uh, show up here. I just saw one disappear where they do need some more workers. So that tells me we cannot zone any more offices. This is already pushing it. So hopefully new people coming in will, uh, will, will fix those holes, but that is all she wrote, I'm afraid. Okay, so residential, residential. And let's just get the rest of our services in and that'll be it. That will be it. Okay, so crime, even though our city coverage isn't fantastic, because we're well-educated and people have like jobs and opportunities, there's not a lot of crime happening. Crime is a byproduct of when all that stuff isn't working, right? Just like in real life. So there you go, that solves that. And uh, fire coverage, doesn't matter how responsible you are, accidents still happen. So let's make sure we got good coverage for the neighborhoods. So a little one there, kind of help us out. And I think we're gonna have to toss down maybe like a big, big, big fire station when we start moving into the uh, high density. And also like we've got so much more room in these blocks here. So we've got a lot of options for like bigger buildings, like the unique ones, some of the larger parks. We can attach some pathways to those parks. Otherwise, this is really not too bad. It's a very gentle blend of the grids. Still feels gridded overall. Yeah, mission accomplished. And it's just that slow progression with the zoning. Don't go, don't go too much too fast. Otherwise, the death wave shall come. She'll come. Okay, just a couple more connecting roads. And then I think that's it. I think that's it. So next episode, we're going to be uh, continuing with uh, public transit. We'll fill in some more of this. Uh, we'll see what milestones we can get unlocked, but really the goal for the next few episodes should be just to get the bigger infrastructure projects like started, some thoughts on, uh, on it all. And I will leave you guys with a bike lane. I will leave you guys with one bike lane that can hopefully cross the whole length of the city. What would that one be, eh? Let's get started. I'm going to use the just default Dan bike lanes that are from the After Dark DLC. There's a casual two-lane road, no parking. Parking's been replaced by a bicycle. And this kind of cuts through rather nicely. And we wanted an interconnected, so at any point, no matter what street you take, you can always get from one side of the city to the other. And so if we're doing an entirely uninterrupted... Um, network we would need lots of ways through oh this is awesome oh. getting close to the uh one way setup there yeah unfortunately the uh, bicycle lanes don't like to cooperate too well with the uh the one ways but we can always draw on the outskirts of some of these yeah it all connects and then you know neighborhoods like this right 
we would have a little bit of a hard time kind of going around the block, but we can play Eminent Domain. These poor people saving up their whole lives for their dream homes. And then it's Kaputz. But no, something like this, right? So we can take the uh, zoning out. This can be walking paths. We can put in some fences. It can be a strong... Oh, commercial again. There you go. Beautiful. So there you go. So we'll do some more bike lanes. We'll uh, do some more connectivity. We'll do some more bike bridges. Let me know about the uh, bicycle autobahn network. I think we're going to get carried away with that, but why the heck not, right? So yeah, join me next episode. I'll see you guys again. We'll build out our population. We're getting there. Onwards and upwards. I'm liking this. And I hope you guys are having a good time building along too. I know some of you have been sharing your pictures. So if you're uh, still on the fence, come join our Discord. It's a lot of fun. Play games together in there, hang out. You can show off what you're working on. Great place to kind of keep the conversation going. And if you want, yeah, check out the live streams. I'm tempted to maybe try one over on uh, YouTube just to kind of see what the difference is like, but you never know. And if you haven't already subscribed and you're this far in, what are you doing? Good to have you back so often, but don't you, uh, you know, don't you want to flex on that like sub badge and stuff? Anyway, guys, I'll see you again. Drop me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. And uh, stay hydrated. Be kind to each other. Be kind to yourself. And happy building. I'll see you again. Adios.